By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim? Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And today I bring you an old school match that is uh, between my Timmy's Spellbook deck, Mono Blue Timmy Spellbook, against an Arborea Underworld Dreams deck. So that's going to be quite interesting. And I'm playing against Jun Erik. And um, this match is actually part of a series of matches that I will be posting right here on Timmy Talks because you're going to see all the matches that I played in Odol. And Odol stands for the online uh, Dutch old school league. And that's held every month. And every so now and then when I have a moment, I participate in this great online tournament. Um, and if you're actually based in Europe or you're based somewhere else, but you can play according to Central European time, then this might be an interesting online tournament for you. It's organized by HW underscore MTG. His name is Hank, but you can find him with that name on Instagram and you can contact him. You can also uh, look on Facebook for Odol and then you'll probably find their Facebook page. As a matter of fact, I'll put a link in the description below so you know exactly what to do if you're interested in this online league. Well, for this episode, like I said before, I'm playing against Yoon Erik and he's brought an Underworld Dreams uh, Arboria deck to the table. Now, before I start with the deck text, I just quickly want to point out, like always, that if you want, you can skip the deck text. Check the description below. There you will find a timestamp marked MTG Games. Click on there and that will take you straight to game number one. And here we are going to continue with the deck tech. I think I'm actually going to start with my deck, Timmy's Spellbook. And here you see my deck today, Timmy's Spellbook. So this is the deck that I've brought to the online Dutch uh, league. Um, and I'm just going to keep it really brief because you probably already saw this deck coming by a few times. I play it quite often. This is, of course, my uh, one of one of my pet decks. I love playing with my four protocol sorcerers. I love playing with pirate ship. And there's actually a little story. If you read uh, the flavor text of protocol sorcerer, it says that um, it has an eye on worldly pleasures. And then I thought, well, if you're looking for that then the best place is to go on a pirate ship, right? So that's why I have to put a pirate ship in this deck for the story, right? So he goes on the pirate ship and he goes on an adventure. And most of the cards you see here are things that he finds during his adventures. So that's basically the story side of this deck. When we look at what the deck wants to do, it is your typical blue deck in the sense that it wants to control the situation. I've got three icy manipulators. I've got four counter spells and a mana drain that's really going to help me to control the board. I also have two control magics. So those icy manipulators and control magics are quite important because it allows me to let the creatures of my opponent slip. I don't have to counter those. I've got my measures. I'm also playing with one mace. Uh, by the way, and of course, I'm playing with quite a lot of creatures myself as well. So I don't have to counter his creatures. I feel that sometimes with blue decks where there is a lot of counter magic, they're just so focused in stopping everything that your opponent does that you're not building anything up yourself. And that's that's not the kind of, that, that can be a good game. And I know that people enjoy that, doing that as well. But personally, where I come from and my magic background is really the mid-range decks. You know, they used to rule... Uh, the magic table. So I really enjoy always having options. You know, I like to do a lot of stuff and not just or only counter or only play aggressively. Of course, it's fun to build those decks every once in a while and I enjoy playing them as well. But overall, I think I'm more of a mid-range player and I would kind of see this deck more as a mid-range control deck. It definitely has that blue control element in it, right? Um, so th the great thing about blue is when you go to that mid-game, late game, you can you can easily get card advantage. So there's your one JM they tome in there, but also there's the Brain Geyser, of course, and the epically strong Ancestral Recall. So those can definitely give me the card advantage that I need. Also a card that you shouldn't underestimate in this deck are the two copy artifacts. They're just so incredibly versatile. And I think I discussed them for the last deck deck with Timmy Spellbook as well, but it's just because they're just great, you know, they're great to play with. If I have them early game, I can use them to ramp, like I can copy a Mox, can copy, and, and Moxen are often on the table with old school, don't underestimate that. I can copy a Soul Ring, um, you know what, if I'm lucky, I can even copy a Mistress Factory. You have to be careful with that, because as soon as you animate the Mistress Factory, I mean, it's an artifact creature and it's a land, so there are so many boxes that are ticked right, right at that moment when you animate it. 
Your opponent can play a Lightning Bolt, can play a Disenchant if you're doing it in your turn. And then when you cast a Copy Artifact and your Mistress Factory is gone, you have to make sure that you have another target. And of course, you also lose a land. So then that whole ramping strategy doesn't work anymore. So you really have to be careful with that. Now, if you have a situation where you have a Chaos Orb on the board, of course, you're going to copy the Chaos Orb. Mid game, late game, you're going to copy your IC manipulators probably, or maybe your jam date home. So, or, or of course, an artifact that may perhaps your, your opponent has. So, there are just so many options with the copy artifact. And it is unfortunate that the card has become so expensive over the recent years, but it is understandable when you look at the power of this card. Okay, this is my deck. I'm actually not going to waste more time. Uh, discussing it because you know I've, I've already discussed it last week so you can check that video if you want to and i think you're probably also eager to see yun edix deck because it's quite interesting let's take a look and here we see the deck of yun edix and as you can see it is uh green and black and the first thing that i notice here are the three arboreas in the middle well and i guess there's a lot to notice, actually. It's not the first thing I noticed. But anyway, it's in the middle, and I want to discuss uh, the Arborea first because I think it's kind of the the core of this deck. So Arborea is an enchant world from Legends, two green and two to cast. And it reads, if a player does not cast a spell or put a card into play on his or her turn, no creatures may attack that player until after his or her next turn. So the whole idea of playing with an Arborea deck is that you do nothing in your turn and then your opponent cannot attack you and you benefit from that now when we look at this deck then um, how does he benefit right that's the next question how do you benefit from doing nothing well underworld dreams is of course a great card to do that because you're, it's your opponent's turn and your opponent is going to be punished for drawing cards now uh, a great uh, synergy with underworld dreams or of course cards that force your opponent to draw cards like howling minds there are three howling minds in there there are also then, when you play with Howling Mine, it's also gr a great idea to play with Black Vice. So there are four Black Vices in here. When you're doing nothing in your own turn, it's also a great idea to play with Ivory Towers, just to gain so much life that even when your opponent can attack, it's not going to really make a dent. So he's playing with four Ivory Towers. I think, <laughs> personally, I think it's kind of steep playing with four, but we're going to see how that works out. Um, and also an interesting addition here are the two Guardian Beasts. So he's also going for the Guardian Beast Chaos Orb combo. So if he can get that onto the table, that's going to be quite interesting. And he does play with black. So that means he does have a Demonic Tutor. So with Demonic Tutor, he can also look up his Chaos Orb, right? So I always feel that when you play with the Demonic Tutor, all your silver bullets become a plus one, right? So it's almost like he's playing with two Chaos Orbs. Now, a card that I would also like to kind of put in the spotlight here because it's just a card that's a personal uh, favorite of mine um, is Darkness. So Darkness is a card from um, from Legends. It's one black to cast, and it's basically, it's an instant. It's basically a black fog, right? It reads, creatures attack and block as normal, but none deal any damage. All attacking creatures are still tapped. Play any time before attack damage is assigned, right? So combat is already assigned, but before the damage tap, you can play the Darkness. Now, what's really cool about this card is, first off, I really uh, like the art. It kind of reminds me of Alien, right? When you look at those little little creatures that are coming out of the big creature, I, don't, I mean, what's going on here? And then also the flavor text, right? It's a William Shakespeare quote. If I must die, I will encounter darkness as a bride and hug it in my arms. So it's... Um, for me, this is just the flavor text and everything. It really makes it makes it old school. I really enjoy uh, looking at this card, looking at what the card does. Um, what's interesting here uh, is that we do see that uh, Yoon Edic has decided to go full on with a strategy of not taking any damage, right? And, and with damage, I mean combat damage. We see three darkness, we see four fog. So there are a lot of ways for him to prevent combat damage. And then I have to ask the other question, you know, what is he going to do to, for example, prevent damage uh, dealt by a big fireball? I mean, I'm not, I'm playing mono blue. I don't have a big fireball, so that's not going to be a problem for you and Eric in this matchup. But that is something that I uh, wonder about. What I also really like in this deck, by the way, because I do really like seeing decks like this, are the three Stormseekers. That is pretty cool. Also, Stormseeker Howling Mine is kind of like a classical combo 
What I like as well are the four ivory towers combined with the Sylvan libraries, right? Because when you want to draw an extra card with the Sylvan, you take four damage. But if you already get so much life from the ivory towers, you can kind of start exchanging your life for cards. And that is something that uh, Sylvan library does fairly well. I actually think, and maybe this is kind of odd, uh, maybe Book of Raz could work in here with so much life gain. I know Book of Raz is six, it's not the best card in the world, but I'm just thinking about exchanging life for cards. Actually, now that I'm saying this, of course not Book of Raz. Greed, greed. I think greed would make a great addition in this list, but that's just my opinion. Um, okay, so these are the cards of Unedic. This is Unedic's deck. Um, let's go to the games and see how this is going to work out. Game number one, and here we go. I believe it is Yunitic with the Sulkanar playmat who's on the play here. I'm, of course, playing with the Timmy playmat. There we see a Bayou into an Ivory Tower. So that means some life gain. And I'm just play, uh, playing a basic island passing turn here. One life for Yunitic going to 21. Deciding not to play anything. That's interesting. Now I've got my second island out, so I've got my counter capabilities. And of course, uh, Yoon here is gaining some extra life. There is a swamp passing turn here. And am I going to play something out? Oh, I guess I am. I'm a little bit surprised because usually you would choose to keep two blue open. But in this case, I'm just going for it, playing my Prodigal Sorcerer. And I probably also like seeing that Yoon keeps you know gaining life here I have to do something back perhaps that's the strategy here and I wonder if I'm gonna attack with my factory next turn because when you play against green you have to think about crumble that is a big problem but first things first it's Yoon Edix turn he's now on 25 and there is a chaos orb Nice, and of course I can't counter because I was tapped out. So, there we go. The life total there on 25. There is another Mishra's Factory attacking now because my opponent doesn't have green open for a possible crumble. So dealing two damage, he's also gaining life. And there's another Ivory Tower, wow. Okay, so this is going to be, um, this is going to be difficult. Remember, I'm playing with blue, so I don't really have anything to get rid of the Ivory Towers. Of course, I have my own uh, Chaos Orb, but that's going to be tough. So I'm using my Strip Mine to get rid of the Bayou. In response, he's going to flip his Chaos Orb. I wonder what he's going to flip on. Oh, actually, it's a miss. Ah, it is a miss. Lucky for me, bad luck for Yoon here, attacking with the 2-2. And he's going to drop, it looks like he's now on 22. It's a little bit difficult to see. Or is he on 32? Maybe he's on 32. Yeah, I believe. And now he's on 36. Wow. I mean, he's gaining so much life. And of course, the problem for Yun is here, he is very low on land. But the good thing for Yun is he's got two ivory towers on the board. And he's playing against the blue deck. So, pinging him for one at the end of turn with my Timmy. Uh, playing a maze here. Okay, so now I can do something funny. Uh, I can animate both of my factories and attack with the Tim, and after damage is dealt, I can use my factory. So attacking here, getting him back out of combat, so he's and gonna deal damage, and he's gonna ping in Yoon's turn. And am I gonna play another Timmy, another Protocol Sorcerer? So that's quite nice for me, but the problem remains that, I mean, how am I ever going to kill Yoon Edic here? Look at his life total go. I mean... Is he now on 40? This is gonna be tough. It looks like he's on 41. This is gonna be really difficult for me to keep up. And I wonder what Yoon's Eric, uh, Eric uh, tactic is going to be. Paying him for one year, discarding that fog. So he's just not finding any lands. And even if he does, he probably only wants to just play out one card and that's it because he wants to keep gaining life. And I've got a lot of pressure going on here. I don't have to worry about uh, animating my factories because my opponent only has one swamp. Oh, look at that, a Brain Geyser for two, trying to refill my hand here. Probably looking for some bigger creatures. For example, I'm playing with two Air Elementals. 
and also a Mahamoti Jin. So I have five mana out. So an Air Elemental could at least dent Yun Edic's life total a little because look at that, he's now on 45. This is going to be really difficult. And he's discarding a Fog, passing turn here. And going to 43 after the double ping. And I'm getting my factories ready. That means I can swing in for five here because I'm going to use that mace trick as well. So taking five damage. And uh, I mean, Unitic, he's, he's working that life counter. He's now on 38 and then he gains life again. I mean, he gains six life a turn, right? So he goes back to 44. Then I'm going to ping him for two at the end of his turn. Um, you know, eventually he will die, but it's just going to take a very long time. And I think... Yun Edic realizes this as, as well, but as long as he doesn't draw any lands, what can he do really? So I hope for this game that uh, Yun Edic will start drawing some lands. Attacking again for five here. Uh, that means... Oh, actually I'm not. Okay, this is interesting. Oh, I am, I am. I'm, I've already untapping it. So attacking him for five. So he's going to go down to 43, it seems. He's going to gain six, so he's going to go up to 49 again. Oh, man. Or does he want to play something out? Oh, he hasn't taken damage yet, I think. It's a little bit unclear for me now. Maybe he's thinking about casting a darkness. Oh, he's in his discard phase already. Okay, sorry for that. I thought he was responding to my combat. Okay, he's going down to 41 after the double ping. Yeah, pointing out that he can't really do anything with one measly swamp in the game. I kind of feel bad here for, for Yoon Edic because just being stuck on land, it's such a drag. And he's now pointing out, just to clarify, that he'll do the calculations afterwards because he just keeps changing his life total. So he just is going to keep track of everything. Um, remember, he gains six life every turn, and I think I dealt six damage as well after that attack because I could pump one of my Mishra's factories. Now I'm going to ping him for two, so he's actually going down two life, so this is a big step for me. He's now on 39, and of course I can now swing in for seven. And there is the darkness. Hello, darkness, my old friend. And that means no combat damage for Yun, so he's going up. But of course, he only has six cards in hand now, so he's only going up four lives. But he's on 43. I mean, I'm dealing so much damage, and it's hardly making a dent. There is a second swamp. I'm sure Yun Edic was hoping on a bayou or something. Oh, he's going to do something. Howling Mine. And I'm going to counter the Howling Mine with the double uh, Ivory Towers on the board. And also, I kind of learned when your opponent is playing with Howling Mine, it's usually for a very good reason. So... Very wary on those Howling Mines. Um, attacking here for seven, untapping, passing turn. So now you need it because it's getting some damage in because he had to play out the Swamp, the Darkness, the Howling Mines. So he's, he's a bit, you know, getting low on cards here. Finding a Forest, pinging him for two. And he's now on 34. So things can go pretty quickly if he can't keep up that... Um, that seven cards in hand. He now has four cards in hand, it seems, playing a darkness here, so that's going to help him. But he's kind of off the ivory tower plan. What he really needs is another Howling Mine. Actually, he just needs two. He just wants to draw tons of cards again, and look at that. He can use his dice, which is not a good sign here for uh, my opponent. And he's actually going to drop... Oh, no, he's still on 21. He's not below his starting life total. He's on 21, but he's going to take tons of damage now. Although, what am I going to do? Am I going to attack here? It looks like I'm actually playing, I'm playing a pirate ship. So this is a 4-3 for one blue and four. And I can also ping with it. Uh, the thing is, it cannot attack unless my opponent has islands. So I actually can't attack, but I can't ping with it. So I can start dealing more damage. And there is a force field. That's actually an interesting card here. And I'm choosing to mana drain it. I just want to keep dealing full damage with my 
uh, Mishra's factory. He's pinging him for two here. And yeah, it seems that it's now going to be pretty pretty much over for you and Idik. There's now just so much pressure on the board. I can animate all the factories so I can hit him for seven here. I do need to tap my mana, right? Oh, I'm using the mana from the uh, mana drain. Okay. <laughs> I was like, why am I not tapping mana to animate my factories? Then I'm using the mana drain mana. So dealing quite a lot of damage to Yoon Edic there. And you can see his life total quickly going downhill. And he's now on 12. So I'm going to draw another card. Also played an Icy Manipulator there as well. Attacking again for 7. There's a Darkness. So he can kind of stole the inevitable it seems he's now on 12 gonna pass turn remember i've got two timmies in a pirate ship so i can even i can deal three damage just with that using my icy to tap down his forest making sure that he can't crumble and uh, he needs double green to play that arborea even if he has an arborea on the table it doesn't protect him from the timmies of course there's an Underworld Dream, so that means I'm going to go to 19, but that's not a big problem. It looks like I'm thinking about countering it. But I don't think that would be a good decision. I just need to focus on, you know, what could disrupt me from winning this match. And, and Underworld Dreams is just not a problem at the moment since I'm still on 20. Well, now on 19 after the first damage is being dealt by the Underworld Dreams. Attacking here again. And untapping. He's now on 4. And tapping down his forest. There is a second forest for Yoon. But I mean he's got he's gonna go to, to one because of the double Timmy and the pirate ship. Another underworld dreams. And am I now forgetting to ping? It looks like I'm forgetting to ping. Okay, that's that's not very smart. I can at least attack with six. If he has a fog. He can fight to live another day. It's a little bit unclear to me what's happening. Okay, I'm deciding just to attack with one Mishra's factory. And then pinging for two. Okay, okay, okay. It looks like I wanted to win with my Timmies. Okay, so that is it. That is the first game is done here for Yoon Edic. And now we're going to go to our sideboards. And we're gonna go to we're gonna go figure out what to board in best against these decks. So we'll catch back up with them in game number two. Game number two, and it's Yoon Edic on the play here, playing a Bayou into an Ivory Tower. So same opening actually as uh, game number one. There is a Mock Sapphire and a basic island and there's a soul ring pretty quick start for me am i can i play out a uh, protocol sorcerer yes oh yeah <laughs> timmy turn one this is the life and we see some life gain here by the way from uh, yun Edic going to 21 because of that ivory tower so again facing an ivory tower there is a city of brass and tapping four here what could I play for four? Of course, I see manipulators. I'm gonna tap down his city. Ah, oh, that's mean. Because that means Unitic also takes a damage. That kind of takes out the life you would get from the Ivory Tower. He's passing turn, taking a damage, going to 20. And playing an island. And copy artifact. Ah, oh, man. I feel, I'm sorry, Unitic. I feel really bad. This is just, I'm just gonna tap down your lance here and yeah. Wow. Okay. So hopefully Yun can do something about the double copy, uh, I mean the double IC manipulator or else this game will end quite, well, not quickly actually because of that ivory tower, finding a ghost ship now as well. And I think we're discussing that a little bit. I mean, this must be tough for you. You build a deck and you have an idea and you want to show your cards and then you just face with this awful double icy situation and he just didn't find any lands in, um, in the first game. So there wasn't much he could do against that. And there's another Timmy hitting the board. 
And this is again looking very, very difficult for, for Unitic. And uh, attacking here for two, playing another Timmy. So, I mean, that's going to add up as well. That means I can start pinging him for three every turn. Of course, that one Timmy still has summoning sickness. And remember, every time I'm tapping that City of Brass, it's also a damage for, for Unitic. So there's simply too much damage going in for one Ivory Tower. And the problem is only two of the damage that he gets in total is from combat damage. So even an Arborea or a Darkness or a Fog, it's not really going to buy him that much time. And there is a Library of Alexandria that I'm just going to use for mana now. Another copy artifact. Come on, you also see that. Yeah, you also see Unitic just laughing it off, thinking, okay, there's just really nothing I can do here. I'm, I'm sorry, Unitic, looking back at this, I just want to apologize. This is really disgusting. This is, uh, this is con uber control. And what can you do against this? I mean, yeah, he's got one swarm now. I mean, if he draws into a crumble, which I'm sure he has in his deck, right? He can he can use Crumble because it's an instant when I tap down his Bayou and his his City of um, Brass. So that's at least gonna gonna not get him back in the game, but kind of give him some some lands to use the turn after. He's on 13 now, getting damage again, going to 12, gaining some life from the tower, going to 15. I mean, I'm going to ping him for 3, end of turn, he's going to go to 12, going to attack him with the ship, he's going to go to 10 again. I mean, I think this is going to be over quite fast, unless Unitic can kind of find a way to worm himself out of this. And like I said, I think step 1 is getting rid of those Icy Manipulators, 3 Icy Manipulators hitting the board, and actually only 1, but 2 of them are copy artifacts. And uh, yeah, going to 12 here, attack him, going to 10. Tap down his lance again. There is a Bayou. Okay, maybe he can do something. And Sylvan Library. Okay, that could help him to find something. Usually Ivory Tower Sylvan Library is great because Ivory Tower is going to give you life. And with Sylvan, you can trade that life for cards. Oh, look at this. This is just ridiculous. This is just ridiculous. I boarded in my extra copy, it seems, from the sideboard. And... I'm sorry, Unitic. This is just ridiculous. There's nothing you can do against this. It's just stupid. You're gonna go down to seven, tapping everything except for his swamp. He's going down to six. Gonna gain some life again from the tower. It's not gonna be enough. Yeah, there's not really anything he can do. I kind of feel bad because both of these games, uh, you know, you've been very unlucky. First, you don't find any lands. I mean, that can happen. It has happened to everybody who plays Magic, and then you usually you just lose. Unless maybe, you know, I don't know, you find you find some miracle. Um, and this second game, I mean, facing four Icy Manipulators, stepping down your lands, it's just ridiculous. That's a scenario you don't think about. And that's it. That's game. Okay, so this was game number two here. Okay, he did have a crumble in hand there. But yeah, crumbling just one icy, that's not really gonna gonna cut it, is it? And of course I had even counter spells in my hand, showing now what I boarded out. So boarded out the mace, the two control magics, and the icy manipulator boarding in. Okay, interesting, boarded in a Nevenerals disc, an extra copy artifact, and my two pirate ships. Maybe I boarded in two discs in total, yeah, two discs. Just to get rid of those enchantments, you know, uh, Nevenerals Disc for Mono Blue can be quite important because it's a way to just to get rid of stuff. And let's see what Unitic boarded in and out. Yeah, put in some extra crumbles. That makes sense. But it just wasn't meant to be. So Unitic, thank you for bringing this very interesting deck to the table. Unfortunately, um, I was being quite an ass in these uh, in these matchups. That's isn't that card called Power Leech, by the way, where you get a life every time um, your opponent activates an artifact. So that could work quite well with the IC Manipulator. So I think that's a very good choice, Unitic, to bring that in from your sideboard. By the way, so 
Sorry, Unitic, for being quite an ass with my deck. Uh, thank you for bringing this to the table. And I hope you had fun with your Arborea brew. Let us know in the comments below how you did in the tournament. Uh, so this was the match for today. Next week on Friday, I'll show you another match that I played in the Odo competition. So I'm just going to show you all the matches that I played. Luckily, my opponents uh, allowed me to record the matches. So thank you for that. So I'll show those matches uh, in the upcoming week. So every Friday you will see an Odo match. For now, thank you very much for watching another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And um, if you want to help the channel out, if you want to support Timmy Talks, you can do so by leaving a like. That already helps. Clicking that thumbs up button. Also, you can leave a comment. Tell me what you think about this matchup. Um, what else? Can you do you can become a subscribers if you're not a subscriber yet according to my statistics about 40 percent of all the visitors is not subscribed so if you're one of those people please consider subscribing it would really help the channel grow uh, another thing you can do is you can become a patron on patreon so there's probably a link popping up right now you can click there and then you can uh, support the show also financially and uh, we've got quite a nice community now. We've got about 70 patrons. We also have a few channel members and we all come together in the Discord. Uh, we organize tournaments. We have little uh, prize giveaways, all sorts of stuff happening in there. So if you're interested, click on the link and check out Timmy Talks on Patreon. Um, as for now, thank you for watching. And before we go, we are going to check out the end, end scroll with all the fantastic, amazing, wonderful patrons and channel members of Timmy Talks. What shall we do with the drunken sailor? What shall we do with the drunken sailor? What shall we do with the drunken sailor? Ik het als fikker te samba kan zien.